Hi boys and girls, Miss Pickowitz with your Thursday reading lesson. Actually, this will be under ELA, <clears throat> but it's going to be about um, our rotations in different parts of balanced literacy. So, we've been talking about read to self. We know when we are doing read to self that you will get started right away. You will read the whole time. You will stay in one spot and you will read quietly. That means you need to try your best to read with your eyes, not your mouth. Read to self is a quiet area. So we are going to practice for two minutes. You can practice with one of your readers that have been in your folders or you can practice with a book you have at home. But when I say one, two, three, go, we're going to practice for two minutes. Next week, we're going to practice for three. And you are going to read to yourself in one spot. And you're going to keep reading. You can read the book again. And you don't need to know all the words. You can read the pictures as well. <clears throat> so let's get started. Read to self. You need to make sure that you are staying in one spot and that you are reading quietly and reading the whole time. So ready? One, two, three, go. So I have finished my books. My book, the time is not up, so I'm going to start it over. Great job with Read to Self, boys and girls. You did a great job. Give yourself a pat on the back. And if your adult wants you to still practice for two minutes later, that's what you're going to do. You do whatever your adult says to do. More practice is a good thing. <clears throat> we will also be reading to someone. So when we are in Read to Someone, you will sit, eek, you'll get started right away. You'll use a soft voice, you'll read the whole time, and you'll stay in one spot. So a lot of the same rules as in Read to Self, except you can talk. Because you're going to take turns reading with your partner. And you will also be using a quiet voice or a whisper voice. And you will sit elbow to elbow, knee to knee, so that you can share the book. We will also have a word workstation where you will be doing word sorts and um, those kind of activities. So the rules for word work are very similar. 
you choose the activity sometimes you have to do the activity we ask you to do sometimes you get to pick you get started right away you work the whole time and you work quietly so the rules are about the same for the other ones and I'll have the link for the practice game for the letter sort sorting and matching capital and lowercase letters because that's a kind of word sort because you're still matching things that go together. So I told you we'd also be learning about work on writing. So work on writing is going to be very similar to the other stations. You'll get started right away. You'll choose what you're going to write about. And there'll be different cards and things that you can practice. So you'll pick. You'll be writing the whole time. You'll stay in one spot and you'll work quietly. So see, it sounds like a lot of different stations, but the rules are all pretty much the same. That you're working quietly and you're staying in one spot. And you're working the whole time. Whether you're reading or you're writing or you're doing a sort. So those are the stations and we're going to keep working on those and practicing those so no worries. Now for my lucky day. You're going to need your journal in a few minutes but first we're going to do an activity. So I want you to give a thumbs up and your adult can, um, can give it to your adult if what I say happened. And if it didn't happen in the book, then I want you to give a thumbs down. I'm going to test and see how well you've been listening because I read this book on Monday in your lesson and on Tuesday in your lesson. So if you need to go back and watch one of those before we do this, then you can pause and you can go back and do that. But if you've listened to it, you should remember what happened. So let's practice. Like I'm going to say that the piglet knocked on the fox's door. And you're going to give a thumbs up if that happened and a thumbs down if it didn't happen. Yes, a thumbs up. Good job. The piglet did knock on the fox's door. So if I say that the fox took the piglet shopping for new toys, you're going to give a thumbs down. That did not really happen. The fox did a lot of things for the piglet, but he did not take them shopping for new toys. Alright, so did the fox make the piglet spaghetti and cookies? Good job, thumbs up. Yes, yes, the fox did. Did the fox give the piglet a bath? Good job, thumbs up. Yes, he did. How about did the piglet spend the night and play games with the fox and wake up and eat breakfast? Thumbs down. Very good. The piglet was there until nighttime, but at nighttime he went home to his house. Very good. Did the piglet go to the lion's door at the end of the book? <laughs> good job. Thumbs down. He went to the bear's door. Very, very good. So your assignment. You guys are some good listeners and you remembered what happened in the story. Pretty good job. Your assignment is to get your journal. And I want you to draw something that the fox did for the piglet in the story. The other day you drew your favorite part and the funniest part. This could be anything the fox did. Just one thing. Only pick one thing. And it has to be something the fox did for the piglet. Not something the piglet did. <clears throat> Not something um, that happened at the end with the bear and the piglet. Something the fox did for the piglet. You can pick from, he gave him a bath. He made him cookies and spaghetti. He gave him a massage. I mean, there's a few things that the fox did for the piglet. So you can pick one, draw about it. And then you know you're supposed to try to write 
what you drew about what's happening in the picture and after you've tried to write then ask your adult to write down what it is that you're trying to say and that's your assignment for today so I will see you tomorrow with Friday's lesson have a great day bye boys and girls